Business Daily, Safaricom and Partners paid IFC a transaction fee of 474 million Kenyan shillings for advisory on Ethiopian entry. Today we get to meet with the CEO of a farm in the same market. Uh, my name is Robert Ching. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Bojani Investment. Sabojani so deals with investment and financial advisory, uh, so basically we help individuals to connect their personal finances and life goals. So that comes through just getting to understand what financial markets are, then looking at investment options that are available, and then taking advantage of such opportunities, so that in the long run, uh, that can help them to live happier and more fulfilling life. The decisions we make, who we fall in love with, how we enjoy life is mostly affected by our childhood. Yes, so what I can say, during my childhood, I used to see a very, very uh, deep society where people cared for each other, and the family was rich in a way, leave alone the kind of richness that we look at these days. There's always enough food, there's something in the granary, and uh, during Christmas, people would come together, uh, the uncles, the aunties, they will give you advice and uh, they will tell you now that you are preparing for high school, this is what you need to do. So there's that wealth, I can call it intangible asset that was there. Yeah, so, so that has always uh, like kind of shaped me to be looking at how we can create wealth at the family level. That if we move uh, beyond the dependence and independence level, we go to interdependence level. Where by interdependence level is where I can just make a phone call and uh, call you and you'll help me sort that problem instead of wasting a lot of time trying to do things by myself. So I believe that if we create wealth as a families in Africa, we'll have more options and we'll live happier life, lives rather than everyone trying to do things by themselves. So you'll find that whatever you are struggling with, actually there's someone in your own family that has figured it out and they can help you. And that's why I believe in us Going back to that interdependence level, uh, because with interdependence, you actually use less resources to achieve the same objective. Yeah, so you can have a problem. So instead of relying only on Robert, <laughs> we have like six other people who come up with ideas, even from a financial point of view, and you find that you're able to go far. And when, even when the children complete school, instead of having one option of looking for a job, whether it is at EABL, Safari, or at Abogani, that son or daughter of the family can actually be given capital to try out a new business. It could be 50,000 and 100, and that would help us to get forward because the family is actually the biggest wealth creator globally. Even some of the big tech companies that we are looking at, uh, their parents took a chance on them and gave them capital to start the business. Then other people came in much later. But I feel like that's a little bit forgotten, so the good thing is that that's an opportunity for us to forge a way forward. And that's the inspiration that I got from my child. Businesses are taking advantage of technology to make their lives easier and pockets heavier. People don't understand these financial products and services. So we decided to start with financial education first. And when we planned and organized a physical session, what happened is that 12 people paid and only four people joined. So it was an issue of people saying, when are you going to have the next one? You want to be part of it. Then when you try to organize the next one, uh, so many people canceled in the last meeting. So we decided to start using WhatsApp. So we were just trying, we didn't know whether it could pick. And the first session that we had on WhatsApp, uh, 30 people paid about 2,500 for a three-week session. And it was actually quite exciting. So since then, we got even recognized by Facebook. We've shared our story as we able to use social media and technology to reach out to as many as possible. So currently what we are doing is that we are building a web platform where people can uh, get this information in a structured way. We can have content in audio format and then we can connect with CMA licensed players. So if you want to invest in a money market fund, if you want to invest in the stock market, if you want to get information, you'll get it all there respective of where you are connected. And uh, because of being online and digital first, we've been able to serve Kenyans and East Africans uh, living in different countries, like 26 countries across the globe. So it, very, it is very easy for people to connect from wherever they are, and that's the beauty of technology. So you see technology uh, as uh, something that can help startups and SMEs to connect with more people. So that's an advantage that we have currently. Since before that, maybe we pay uh, the local media stations, 
to have your story out there. But currently, if you have a Facebook page, you can be able to reach a hundred people, a thousand, hundreds of thousands. And that has been a very big advantage for us uh, that so many people are online and they are willing uh, to take information that is online, so long as you are authentic and they can see value in what you are providing. Unless you have knowledge in finance, it's not easy to differentiate between a financial advisory company and your local bank. Yeah, so what we are doing actually, we are partners with uh, those financial services companies, but our part is for investment and financial advisory. That for you as an individual, you should understand the financial markets, be empowered, so that instead of them coming to you, you are the one going to them. And we've seen that when people have options, they end up, they end up uh, consuming more financial services. So first is to see that, do I have need, the need for insurance services? Once you say yes, then you'll be able to understand from, from our framework what insurance is all about, the options that are available, then you make that decision to approach one of them. So yeah, that is likely to be better than when they are the ones approaching you because if they are the ones who approach you as an individual, it is more of them driving the conversation and they might not really understand your needs. So we are more into investment and wealth advisory, then after that now you can choose the best financial services player that would suit that need. Whether it is in investing, bank account, sometimes we see that someone is always complaining about one bank. So, <laughs> So that one, in a way, it can also be an issue of financial literacy because you have 38 banks and you are supposed to look at your own needs, then you go for the bank that will match those needs. So you might have gotten into the wrong bank, maybe they don't have the kind of apps that would be useful to you or they are not serving you as an SME or startup. So the whole idea is to shop for the available options and try to match that one that would work for you. Or you'd rather even have two different banks for different purposes because it doesn't make sense to complain about one bank and have 37. So those are the ideas that we share with people that you know uh, it is about your needs first. So that, so that by the time you're going to the financial markets, you're looking for a player that would actually help you with your financial journey. And we're not chained to any <laughs> specific firm here if it doesn't work for you. We are in the age of pyramid schemes, promising you to make millions if you give a couple of thousands. Lots of people have been fooled and many have learned. Yes, I would say that one now for, for customers, from a customer point of view, in terms of doing due diligence, uh, we have, uh, for, for, for where to invest, uh, there's the capital markets authorities. So like the brands that you work with, you find that they're all regulated. Uh, whether it is AIB Axis, so you can find out from the CMA website, NEC website, and for us, you can check on NEC for website. So NEC is the government institution for that. That's only for financial advisory. But for wherever you can put money, because for us, we are not fund managers, you don't take anyone's money. So if you were to go to a circle, the regulator is known as SASRA. If you are to invest in treasury bills and bonds, it is at CBK. If you are to do banks, the list of banks is on CBK website. If you are to invest in local shares, that list is on NSC, as well as Capital Markets Authority's website. So, so I would say the, the mistakes that individuals are likely to make is that they don't check that first. So they put their money somewhere, then later on they figure out that company is not regulated. And anyone can come and tell you anything. So it's always good to do due diligence. Because I know people do a lot of research, like uh, whether or not we have World Athletic Championship, you find someone is Googling something about Omanyala or the timing. So we do a lot of research, but when it's come to investment, we are biased to put the money first because of the thrill of seeing that there's, there's going to be some gains. So just advise the general public that always do your due diligence first and there's enough time to do that before you put in the money. Because if you just take anyone's word without doing due diligence, you're likely to make a mistake. And once you've invested, the regulator will tell you, you see, these are the list of circles that you have, or the list of fund managers. This one is not in our list, so you can't blame us. Because the only contract we have with the public is that we should work with people that we've authorized to work with you. So that one, they'll say, is a private affair, like, there's freedom of interaction here in Kenya, so <laughs> the government won't be wherever we are and the decision that we are making. But if we put money in a bank that is regulated, then maybe we can ask the regulator uh, a few questions on in case things go wrong. So I'd say the first level of risk management is to do due diligence. According to Robert, Abujani's greatest achievement was immaterial. So I would say that the moment that one happened is when uh, in our 10th masterclass, 
uh, there's a, a Kenyan who is, who is working in the military, so they are in Somalia, and they did our class on WhatsApp while in Somalia. So that one was a very big moment for us. So I was like, wow. So this thing can actually help individuals and families because they are away from their families, but they have some disposable income that they want to invest. They can't do business or anything else. They want to invest in capital market authority uh, service providers like uh, stock market and fund management companies. And these companies have apps where you can invest remotely, but they didn't have the information. So they joined that masterclass and they, they, they actually told me that I really like, love what you are doing, keep doing it. It has really helped me now at least I'm able to put my emergency fund in an asset management company. So that, that one told us that if someone who is away can do that and that it's only two means that we can actually reach more people and our only challenge now is to find ways to reach more people locally. So that one is, it, it was a very big moment for us as a company. Our country is faced by massive unemployment, but there's always a way we can reduce this number. So for startups, SMEs and young people, what I would say is that they need to start by building the future before they can venture into the business. What do I mean by that? Have some skill or something that you can do that you're unique in, and then build people around you that can support you. So that is called social capital. So in social capital and mental capital, which is about skills and wisdom, when they meet is when you can have a business. Because a business is monetized, uh, social and mental capital. So you need to at least be good in some, be good in something. So these days I hear people say that it doesn't matter, you don't need to go to school, things like that. That doesn't matter. It depends on what one can do. If you're an athlete, there's no school for athletes in Kenya, but you know very well that you need to practice and be able to run in a certain way. That is the skill that you need. So it's not a matter of going to school or not. What can you do if you are in plumbing? Can, I, can you actually fix someone's, uh, let's say, sewage system, or if they have a problem in the house, can you help them? With that? that is the skill that you should perfect. And you will see success comes from all kinds of industries. So you have someone who has never gone to school, but they are very good in music. They don't succeed because they didn't go to school. They succeed because they focused on that, right? And you have footballers like Messi, Ronaldo, and you hear people saying that they're always on the pitch. They practice more than anyone else. So, so success is actually the effort that we put there. But then it is the world, unfortunately, that will give us that success. If you don't see that you're a good footballer, <laughs> we won't give you the opportunity to play. So that also means that we need to be out there so that people can see this thing that you can do well. Is it public speaking? Is it financial advisory? Is it football? We need to see in the kids playing so that you can see that we can rely on you. If as a Kenya, if as Kenya as a country, <laughs> we are to have 11 people in the pit. Believe we won't put you because you want to be there. We'll put you because you can help us succeed. You can help us win the African Cup of Nations or the World Cup. And that's what we need to see as youths so that we put ourselves out there and know that it is a competitive world, but again, there's opportunities for everyone. There's music, uh, there's creative arts, there's football, there's career, you can be a banker, you can be a bank CEO, you see, you can be a magistrate, uh, you can be the gym instructor, there's so much for all of us. And it's just a matter of tagging along where your passion is, where you have the right energy, and you can commit yourself in it over time.